Hey everybody, in today's video, we're gonna learn all about the two major aquatic ecosystems. But before we do, make sure you like and subscribe for more videos just like this. Ready to learn about aquatic ecosystems? Well then, let's go. There are two major aquatic ecosystems or water biomes, and they are the marine biome and the freshwater biome. But first, let's go over the difference between an ecosystem and a biome. An ecosystem is smaller than a biome. Biomes can be found all over our planet and are created by physical factors like climate, rainfall, and more. And an ecosystem is the group of plants and life that live within a biome. The marine biome is primarily made up of saltwater oceans. And marine ecosystems are the largest of Earth's aquatic ecosystems and exist in waters that have a high salt content. Marine ecosystems are the largest biome on planet Earth and cover about 70% of the Earth's surface. Marine ecosystems account for more than 97% of Earth's water supply and 90% of the livable area on our planet. The marine biome is primarily made up of the oceans that can be divided into three classes, oceans, coral reefs, and estuaries. The ocean has layers called light zones because they are based on how much sunlight each area can receive. Light zones are divided into four sub-zones. They are the sunlight zone, the twilight zone, the midnight zone, and the abyssal zone. The sunlight zone is the top surface that gets the most direct sunlight. The sunlight delivers energy to the ocean organisms through photosynthesis. And this sunlight helps the ecosystem by feeding plants as well as small little organisms called plankton, which provide food for many different types of ocean life. The twilight zone is the area right below the sunlight zone. It runs from about 600 feet deep to 3,000 feet deep, depending on how cloudy the water is. Hmm, I wonder if Rod Serling was aware of that. Uh, Gus, Rod Serling developed a different type of twilight zone. Anyway, there's just too little sunlight for plants to live in the twilight zone, and the sea animals that live there have actually adapted to living with little to no light. Hey, guess what? Did you know that some of these animals can produce their own light? Their own light? Like lightning bugs? No. Why? Oh, God, they wouldn't be underwater. Could you? Light fish. Do 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 do. The midnight zone is the zone below 3,000 feet, and it is completely dark there. And also, the water pressure is very high and very cold. Only a few animals have adapted to survive in these harsh conditions. The abyssal zone is the deepest zone at 14,000 feet deep. Next, we have coral reefs. Coral reefs are small in size if you compare them to oceans, but almost 25% of all marine species live in the coral reefs, making them a vital biome. Coral reefs? <laughs> coral! We went over this like a dozen times! Coral! Coral! <laughs> coral reefs! are a part of underwater ecosystems. Wow. That's right, Quinn, because ecosystems are part of biomes. And coral reefs are also a distinct part of the aquatic ecosystem and are made up of a thin layer of calcium carbonate or limestone. Last, we have estuaries. 
Estuaries are areas where rivers and streams flow into the ocean. And this is where freshwater and saltwater meet, creating an ecosystem with many different types of plant and animal life. Sharks, swordfish, tuna, eels, and seahorses are just some of the fish in marine ecosystems. Some marine mammals are blue whales, seals, walruses, dolphins, manatees, and otters. Octopus, clams, squids, oysters, and snails are called mollusks and live in marine ecosystems. Freshwater ecosystems are lakes, ponds, streams, wetlands, and rivers. Basically, any body of water that has salt levels lower than 1% are freshwater ecosystems. And hey, guess what? Freshwater ecosystems are one of the most valuable resources on our planet and are home to over 100,000 aquatic species. There are three main types of freshwater ecosystems or biomes, ponds and lakes, streams and rivers, and wetlands. Ponds and lakes are often called lentic ecosystems, which means they have still water, not moving water like rivers or streams do. Lakes are usually divided up into four zones of biotic communities. The Toral Zone, and this is the area closest to the shore where aquatic plants grow. The Limnetic Zone, this is the open surface waters of the lake away from the shore. Next is the euphotic zone, and this is the area below the surface of the water where there is enough sunlight for photosynthesis. The benthic zone. This is the floor or bottom of the lake. Lake animals include plankton, crayfish, snails, worms, frogs, turtles, insects, and fish. Lake plants include water lilies, duckweed, cattails, and bladderwort. Next, we have streams and rivers. Rivers and streams are often called lodic ecosystems, which means they have flowing water, unlike ponds and lakes. And just some of the types of river animals that live around rivers are insects, snails, crabs, fish, salamanders, snakes, otters, and beavers. River plants typically live along the edge of the river where the water moves much slower. And these plants include tape grass, water star grass, willow trees, and river birch. And last, we have wetlands. The wetlands biome is a combination of land and water. Do you think the land is wet there? It's called wetlands. Yeah. Yeah, you're probably right. <laughs> Next. You're right, Gus. And that land may be mostly underwater for part of the year or flooded at certain times. A key characteristic of a wetland is that it supports aquatic plants. Wetlands include bogs, swamps, and marshes. Wetland animals have a huge diversity in animal life. Amphibians, birds, and reptiles all thrive in wetlands. The largest predators are alligators and crocodiles. Wetland plants may grow entirely underwater or even flow on top of the water. Some of these plants include milkweed, water lilies, duckweed, cypress trees, and mangroves. Hey, guess what? Ready? Did you know that the largest lake in the world is the Caspian Sea? The longest river in the world is the Nile River. And the largest wetland in the world is the Pantanal in South America. Well, hey, guess what? Now we know all about the two major aquatic ecosystems. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to smash that thumbs up button. It really helps out our channel. It sure does. Make sure to subscribe. 
Bye. Bye.